Hello folks, it's Rob, and this is Might and Magic Duel of Champions, which is a uh, collectible card game, free to play, uh, currently available through Steam or Ubisoft, and uh, <clears throat> you'll need a Ubisoft login, and this is online, of course. Uh, but as they're most free to play games, to be honest. Uh, I have yet to do anything in here. I have other than select the Necropolis deck. Uh, mostly because I like green. And the other ones are definitely not green. Um, you get a daily login bonus, which you can bank or take. Banking means it's worth more, but you will invalidate if you don't come back the next day. Uh, there are minimal options. Uh, you have gameplay. And in gameplay, you can, of course, choose your language. You can skip, uh, you know, the confirmation steps. You can have fast play. You can avoid the hero reminders. And you can skip campaigns, cutscenes, if you have seen them before. Uh, sound and video. We can, of course, turn down the FX and the music. Uh, we have a V-Sync. And we have borderless full screen or windowed mode. We don't really have a resolution option. Social options, as you can see. And it's built in with Twitch. So if you have a Twitch account, hey, it's Bob's your uncle. So, <clears throat> we're going to go into training at the moment. And uh, I've not done anything with this, but so we're going to learn how to play this game. And I'll take you through the training. Looks like we got six steps. Recruits, you've just joined the company. This is your new family. Everything that has gone before in your own life is your own affair. Here, we're all brothers and sisters. Okay, so I'm the Foreign Legion now. The company, you fight for it. It fights for you. Let's start with the basics. Attack and counterattack. Officer Vane will explain the tactics to you, but all the training will come from your swordmaster. Me, ghost. Now, let's see you crush that ghost. Okay. Uh, so, start duel with a preset deck. Welcome to the Duel of Champions Boot Camp. Here you will learn the basic rules of the game. Let's begin. Your army is always to the left side of the battleground. Okay, good to know. In each duel, both players have a hero who must be defended at all costs. Okay, so that's basically your hero. Currently, you have an air elemental and a griffin on the battleground. Okay. Your opponent has two ghouls. Okay. So that's the air elemental, and it'll be the griffin. All right. During the action phase of your turn, each of your creatures on the battleground can either move or attack. Okay. Most creatures can only attack enemy creatures who are on the same row. Left click on the air elemental, tap and on iPad to select it. Okay, I guess this has iPad touchscreen functions, which, I mean, makes sense. Definitely would want to play this kind of thing if I had a large tablet. I'm playing on PC. Now select the ghoul to attack it. The ghoul's health points were reduced to zero by the attack, causing it to die and enter your opponent's graveyard. Straightforward. If the enemy ghoul is not blocked, it will deal its damage directly to your own hero. You can move your creatures in front of the enemy creatures to block their attacks. But he's wide open. He's wide open. I want to go right in. My griffin could go right in and win this right now. <sighs> move your griffin to the same row as the enemy ghoul to block it. I bet I'm not allowed to. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Fine. Each creature you have on a battleground can only perform one action each turn. After you have performed every action you can, you must pass the turn to your opponent. Do I have a hero action? Hmm? Select the end turn button to end your turn. Well, nothing. Okay, so end turn. Your opponent will now launch their attacks. Ghoul is attacking my griffin for two points. Since your griffin did not die from the attack, it will deal its retaliation damage back before t uh, back to the attacking ghoul. Okay. The ghoul received one retaliation damage from the griffin. I'm guessing that's this one here in the middle, then. 
and your opponent has no creatures to block your air elemental, which means it can now attack the enemy hero directly. Bring the enemy hero down to zero health points to win the duel. Well, I could have done that with the griffin. Okay. In you go. Well done, recruits. You're starting to understand discipline. Now let's get down to business. Alright, so I get 800 in-game currency and 200 XP. And that's, so that makes training worth definitely doing, because you definitely want currency and XP. Uh, Alright, leave the battleground. So now we move into our next encounter, Denstat Training Grounds. How to plan ahead. Hand, supply, and action phase. Resources, hero levels, deploying creatures. Okay. Lesson 2. Deploying troops on the battlefield. Otherwise known as the importance of keeping one eye on the enemy and the other on your own resources. Another ghost. You fought one before, so let me just say this. Show no mercy. Okay. Like, not attacking with my griffin when I had the opening? Alright, at the start of each duel, both players draw six cards from their deck into their hand. Okay. Your opponent is the starting player for this duel. Alright. To play a card from your hand, you must be able to pay its resource cost. Fair enough. Your opponent has one available resource, allowing her to play a ghoul this turn. Okay, so ghouls are cheap. Most creatures cannot attack on the same turn they are deployed onto the battleground. Uh, most. Hmm. When your opponent ends their turn, the supply phase of your turn will now begin. At the start of your supply phase, your resources are refilled and your resource maximum increases by one. Okay, so... Which is which? You will then draw a card from your deck and move to the action phase. Okay. During your action phase, you can perform actions with any cards that have a green glow around them. Select your hero card to view her list of abilities. Okay. Increasing your hero's might, magic, and destiny levels will allow you to play more powerful cards from your hand. Level up your hero's might. Okay, so these are might, magic, and hero, I guess. So I'm level 2 hero, 1 magic, 1 might, and we can do that. Alright. Now you are able to play a griffin from your hand. Okay. And I'm guessing, it, okay, it costs 2 resources to play. Is that this? Alright. Hero needs a might level of at least two to play this creature while we have that. This is the attack damage dealt by the creature. Okay. This is the retaliation dealt damage dealt by the creature. Right. And this is its health. Okay. Now select the battleground provision in front of your ghoul to deploy your griffin. Well, that's straightforward. That's definitely what I would want to be doing. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Griffins cannot attack on the turn they are deployed, so we'll need to pass the turn to your opponent. Okay. Duel is in your hands now. Defeat the enemy hero. Uh, okay. Right, so, um... If we move up to three... should be able to play some of these, then. And if I drop that, say here, that will defend me. And this one can go and attack, take out that ghoul. And I don't think I can do anything else. So we end our turn. So now on my turn, I could increase my stuff again, and I'll just increase this one just because, 
and I'll play that and then I'll send these guys in to kill. I hope that you'll be better in real battle. Bernard is right, your heart is certainly in it. Great. 800 gold, 200 XP. Alright, so I'm guessing that's my experience bar. It shows accumulated resources. Okay. So there's our next one. Border Keep. What are creature types and how they serve you in battle? Melee, shooter, and flyer. Okay. Today's lesson was that was that we are all different. We need to concentrate on our strengths and combine them if we are to achieve victory. Banshee. Banshees are insidious things, but you should be able to get rid of these without too much trouble. Got it, recruits? Okay. Again, with our preset deck, we go on in. Right. Battleground has now grown to full size, with eight positions where you can deploy creatures. Okay, so we now have more space. Okay. This is your front line. Alright, this is your back line. Okay. All creatures fall into one of three subtypes, melee, shooter, or flyer. The subtype determines where you can deploy a creature on the battleground and how that creature attacks. Select the crossbowman in your hand. Okay. Crossbowman is a shooter, which means you can only be deployed in your back line. All right. Most shooter creatures have an immune to retaliation ability. This means that they will never receive retaliation damage when they attack. Handy. Pull your crossbowman to the back line. Okay. I'm going to stick it there. Okay, there. Before ending your turn, don't forget to use your hero's ability. Definitely. Level up your might so you can play griffin. Yep. Now end my turn. Melee creatures can only be deployed to the front line and can only attack enemies who are directly in front of them. Fair enough. You can defend your shooter creatures from flyer and melee attacks by placing another creature in front of them. Select a griffin from your hand. Okay. And flyer creatures can be deployed anywhere in the battleground. Like melee creatures, they can at only attack enemies directly in front of them. So, I, I mean, yeah, I want to stick it there. Okay, now you select your crossbowman to launch an attack. Okay. Shooter creatures can attack enemy creatures on the front or back lines. Target the enemy skeleton on the back line. Okay. Before ending your turn, don't forget to level up your hero's might so you can play Radiant Glory next turn. Now win this duel to prove your worth. Okay, might's up. And, uh, don't think I can use this right now. Yeah, so end my turn. <laughs> well, that looks unpleasant. Alright. Now I have to stop them from killing me. Hmm. Now these are all magic flyers. Radiant glories. Okay. So, I guess I can play flyers in front or back line. And, uh... I guess I should drop this one... here. Just to keep bad things from happening to me. I'm send this attack out. And then send that attack out. Good. He'll probably have to move to cover me instead of attacking. Right. Yes. And we level up. Uh mm. 
might. Alright. And end. Ah, yeah. You gonna deploy something here? Okay. Yeah, just leave it wide open. That's okay. Alright. So, put that one down. And I send this one in. kill. And I still have a point, but uh, what the heck, we'll increase the might again. Yay! Okay. And, and turn. This is going to be it, basically. Finish it with that guy. Yeah. And our gold, 200 XP. And leave the battle round. Okay, Whispering Forest North. Beyond creatures, magic and spells. What? Oh, this is the daily rewards. Okay, so it flips over. It must have just flipped over. Right. So I stashed yesterday's. And I can cash in right now. <clears throat> or I can grow it again. And tomorrow I get a tournament ticket. And you can see the rewards are supposedly th bigger and bigger as we go. I don't know what 500 gold does for me right now, so I'm going to just confirm the save. And... Right, back to this. Uh, Destiny and Magic. Beyond Creatures, Magic and Spells, Destiny and Fortunes. Okay. Gary End tried to talk with Sayuri yesterday. Hmm, it's a little difficult to chat with a mute. That's why she's our scribe. We ask only that she not write, not talk. Garan drew shapes on the ground. Ah, rather ingenious coming from you, and... Garan does not know if she understood. She frowned, and then she left. So Garan speaks in the first person. So, defeat the Banshee. Okay. Your opponent is starting player for this duel. That's nothing new. Spells can be played during your action phase to help your army and hinder your enemies. They have a resource cost, and your hero must be meet the required magic level to play them. Okay. There's a sunburst spell in your hand that could destroy both enemy creatures on the third row. But you need to raise the magic level of your hero by one to use it. Let's have a look at the card. Deal three damage to all creatures of target row. Well, that's quite nifty. And this one? Gold pile. Fortune. Instant. Select my hero. Increase the magic. Okay. Green glow has appeared about the sunburst card in your hand, which means you can now play it. Yep. Select the sunburst spell. I'm going to just read this the once. Remember, you can right-click, double-click, tip, tap on iPad on any card to take a closer look at it. Right. Target row where the two enemy creatures are. So, okay, it means this row versus column. Okay. And, and turn. Fortunes are similar to spells, but generally have effects that twist the rules of the game to your advantage. Play a fortune card, your hero must have a high enough destiny level. So your hero started with destiny level 2. You can play the gold pile fortune this turn to gain extra resource. Okay. 
You will be asked for confirmation when playing cards that don't target anything. Alright. <clears throat> if you level up your hero's might, you will have enough resources to deploy two griffins this turn. Well, that sounds like a thing to do. The rest is up to me. Well, I'm going to want one griffin there. And I'm going to want another griffin there. And that's it. So, end the turn. Right. So, I have four resources. I'd be able to play two griffins regardless. I should definitely do that. Right, you go kill that thing. Right, you go kill that thing. Okay, and then uh, I'll increase our might, because why not? And end. Okay, so uh, send that one out. Send that one out. You go kill her. You go kill her. Right, dense at west. Intricate and subtle use of spell and fortune subtypes. Right, I should remind you that we've just joined an elite company. We aren't just vulgar mercenaries, we're windswords, and don't forget it. Our services cost a pretty penny, but it's your sweat that earns your pay. Hmm. Gold is not as precious as glory, and the respect of our ancestors is the price of your blood. Well, at least Garand doesn't have to refer to himself every single time he speaks. Garand is going a little easy on you. His champion isn't very powerful, but if you wait too long to beat him, he will call upon stronger allies. No time to waste. Okay, so I'm fighting Garand. Each spell in Fortune has a subtype of instant or ongoing. Fire shield spell being played by your opponent is an ongoing spell that enchants a creature on the battleground. Remember, you can right click, double click, okay, so let's enchant creature permanent. When an enchanted creature is attacked and dealt damage, fire shield deals the same amount of damage to the attacking creature. So, does that also apply to, like, archery non retaliation subject creatures? Okay. If your sea elf attacks a demented, it will be killed by damage from the fire shield. Well, that answers that question. However, you have a spell in your hand that called Cleansing Light that can remove ongoing spells like fire shield from the battleground. Convenient. First, increase your hero's magic level. Done. Now, select the Cleansing Light spell in your hand. Okay. Let's have a look at it. Destroy all ongoing spells in play. Okay. Cleansing Light is an instant spell, which means its effect will trigger instantly and one time only. Select Yes to play Cleansing Light. Okay. Zot. Always read Spell and Fortune cards carefully, because the duration of their effects can vary. Now I'll finish off my foe. Okay, so... Kill that. I don't have any more resources, and I've done everything I can, so end my turn. All right.
right, so I got four resources. I can play. Hmm. This is bless. And this, lesser air elemental. And this is an RC elf archer. And that's a griffin. And that's an imperial crossbowman. Okay. So, right, what does Bless do? Permanent gets plus two. I don't know what that is. Uh, attack, I guess? <clears throat> right. Hmm. Right, so I'm going to need the Griffin. Oh, but I don't have enough might. I'll need more might. Alright. Now I can play the Griffin. I can play these if I want to. And use this to kill that. And right, end. Okay, so here's a question. Can I do I have to play cards first or can I attack and then play cards? Need three magic for that. Right. So yeah, I can attack and I can play cards. Okay. Right, so I can mix it up. Okay. Well done, men. You're becoming real pros. Right. A quick break, and then afterwards it's the last session of the day. Right. Keeping the paycheck coming in. Good stuff. Alright, last one. Road to Flamshreen. 6,000 gold and 1,000 XP. Oh. A real duel on the horizon. Ooh. Watch yourself. Captain Kieran will be watching your training in person. Wind swords. Is glory you seek? Riches? Action? Your wish shall soon be granted. We set out tomorrow at dawn. Thanks, Chief. Recruits. You had heard the captain. Now let's show him how we, how we fight in the company. Okay. And it's Garand again. This time you will face a true army, albeit a small one. We just need to ensure that you've been listening to all I've told you, okay? <laughs> uh, okay, Garand. Oh, I'm using my Necropolis deck. Each player brings eight event cards to a standard duel. At the start of the duel, all the event cards are shuffled together, and the t two are drawn onto the battleground. On your turn, you have the option of playing one or both of the event cards. Tip: Be careful with events, because some cost resources to play, and some have effects that can benefit your opponent. Your opponent is playing the Celebrations event. Each player draws a card. For what? Two resource? Okay. At the start of each turn, the event card on the left will be discarded and the new event card is drawn. There are always two event cards on the battleground. Okay. So, tip if your own deck runs out of cards during a duel your hero will lose one health point every time you need to draw a card okay so you have fixed amount of cards and then you start dying okay and with that final lesson you are now ready to face a complete duel with the classic rules in play good luck great okay so that's out here um two resources what do I got mass grave 
Take a card from your hand and put it face down on the top of your library. Destroy target creature with a cost of two or less. Alright, so that's something to hold on to because I can't do anything yet. Death Seat. Enchant creature permanent. The next time combat damage is dealt to the enchanted creature, destroy it. I guess I use that on opponent creatures. Plague Zombie. In fact, one. When this creature deals attack damage to a creature, that creature gets one poison counter. Deal one damage per counter to creatures with poison counters at the beginning of their controller's supply phase. Okay. Neophyte Leak. Immune to retaliation. No retaliation damage is dealt to this character. Okay. Lingering Ghost. Incorporeal. Deals damage... Uh, damage dealt to this creature by non-magic sources is halved, rounded down. Okay. Skeleton Spearman. Immune to retaliation. It's a shooter. Okay. I have two resources. I can play that one right now if I want. I can all not play that yet. Alright, so I'm going to need more magic to play that. I can play that now too. Hmm. Well, what shall I play? Two of these or one of these? Hmm. I will play two of these. And then we will upgrade our magic. And we end our turn. What was that? Deal two damage to target creature. Okay, so Bzot, basically. Okay. And that's been put there to block me. Alright, so I can just deal with that now. Alright. And I have three resources. Plague Zombie costs three. And it's tough. Alright. Oh, but I need more might for that. Not ready to do that. Okay. more might for that too. This is my new card, Rogue Mercenary. Okay, so I'm going to need more might. Right. And I have to pay a resource to attack with the Rogue Mercenary. So effectively it's a defensive critter. Alright. Um, right, so we'll put that one down there. Still have one resource. So I could play Mass Grave. Right now. Do I save resources between turns? I'm gonna find out. End turn. Okay, so what's this? Weak of the Weaponsmiths. For three, increase the attack of the next creature you deploy this turn by one. And now I have four. So I guess you don't, you can't save. Okay. Um. All right. So this thing, immunity retaliation. can't kill it right away unless I... Oh, I got that. And, uh... I have this. And... I'll still need to block here. To increase my might again. I can put that down. 
and I still have one, so I could play this right now, and I'll lose this one to get rid of that. And then I can attack. And end the turn. Breeder. What the heck's a breeder? Magic channel one. Alright, so it adds to his magic level as long as that's in play. Immune to retaliation, two hit points. Okay. Fate Spinner. Infect two. When this creature deals attack damage to a creature, the creature gets two poison counters. Deal one damage per po counter to creatures with poison counters at the beginning of the controller supply phase. Quite nice. Needs four might. Alright. But that's not unachievable. Um, hmm. And that's my Neophyte Lich. Right, so if I drop that there, I'll still have three. I'd be able to play that one. Okay. This has no retaliation. So I could beat the heck out of it. And need increase my might for next turn. And end my turn. Agony. After an enchanted creature moves or attacks, two damage is dealt to it, so I can basically do mean things to his stuff. Okay. I need to block. And if that moves or blocks... Yeah, okay. If this attacks, it'll take two damage. Alright. And we will increase our magic. And end. Day of Fortune. that to destroy that. I can use that to destroy that. I need to block this. Next time combat damage is dealt to enchanted creature, destroy it. So that's a good way of getting rid of something big and tough. effects. Three, discard a card, then draw a card. Or each player draws a card. You have two cards. But I, for one, I can draw a card. And... Or is that like an ability thing? I can only be able to do it once. Let's try it. 
Alright, so Icy Weapon. Enchant Creature, Permanent. Creature gets plus three attack. Okay. I only melee, or is that like I for anything? I can't use it right now. Right, so I can't do that again. Okay. Right. Okay, he sacrificed his unit. Why is he stuck to mine? Until your next turn, Chan creature cannot attack and is immobilized, so he can't do anything. Uh, what have we got on here? Alright, so if I attack, that will deal with that. This that will deal two damage back. Okay. Needs a four magic. And end. Another one of these. If you haven't played a card this turn, draw a card. If you do, you cannot play a card this turn. Yes. Right, she will kill that. Just gonna move that over and finish this off. Okay. Level 1 Dragon Seal bonus. Okay. Reach level 2. So, more gold, more seals. Okay. And that's the tutorial encounters. Let's see, this is news, that's profile, that's shop, that's cards and decks, card exchange, and leaderboards. Tournament tickets, seals, and gold. Alright, so let's look at the shop. Okay, so seals look like premium currency. And then, of course, you have cash. So for 175 I can buy a Forgotten Wars pack. Twelve cards. Eight commons, three uncommons, one rare, epic, or heroic from the Forgotten Wars expansion. As always, no duplicates, and one chance out of six to get a premium card. And I'll spice things up with you for your three guaranteed wild cards. Okay. I can also get a Herald of the Void pack for 18,500 gold. One guaranteed wild card. One six chance to get a premium. For 25,000, you can get a premium Herald of the Void pack. 40% uh, chance of a second. Okay. Herald of the Void box, 
1200. 10 Herald of the Void Packs. Void Rising, Heroic, Reinforcement, The Box, The Serious Box, Emilio's Pack, Okay, and Duel of Champions. Alright, so Dex. So if I want to play a different deck, I can play this one, Herald's Call, if I have that many seals. I can get Crimson Sands, apparently discounted, right now for 49,990 gold. I have no idea how quickly you're going to earn gold. Right, so those are all out of my reach right now, but uh, some are closer than others. Hakim, Seeker of Mysteries, and the first of the Crimson Wizards, is willing to reveal the ways of his order with the magic of great dark and earth. Take an army of loyal creatures into battle and learn to master the arcane knowledge of the Academy. It has a fixed composition. Okay. Right. Consumables. Tournament tickets. For challenge, the Swiss tournaments roll into town every second day, but they'll only let you compete if you can get your hands on a ticket. Just so happens I have this lovely bundle of six tickets for sale. Okay. I happen to have five tickets. An XP booster and a gold booster. Okay. And here's our featured. Reinforcement pack, a Void Rising pack, a Herald of the Void pack, and a Forgotten Wars pack. You get five guaranteed wild cards and a 20% chance for the sixth one. Alright. Ten Void Rising packs and ten Herald of the Void packs. On top of that, it also comes with 31 wild cards. Alright. Okay. So that's the shop. That tells us what we're doing with that stuff. Look at the news. Okay. And here we have my profile. So I've completed my training mission. Apparently I can change my thingy. That's nice. Let's see, what do I want? Well, some of these are locked. Okay. A lot of options though, so that's cool. I'd say about half of them are available immediately? Okay. And the ones that are premium are a bit more snazzy. But I gotta say the free ones aren't bad. Yeah, that'll do. Right. So, cards and decks. This should tell me all about my collection. So I have my Necropolis deck, which is what I got for free when I chose my faction. And let's see here. filter the types of cards that we have. So if I don't want to see any heroics, we can do that. This is my one heroic card. Okay, so that's my hero. I have no epic cards, no rare cards. These are the uncommon cards in the Necropolis deck. So let's see here. Putrid Lamasu. Angry Wyvern. Fate Spinner, Lesser Shadow Elemental. 
Okay. And then we have our commons. Week of the Weaponsmiths. Day of Fortune. Celebrations. Week of Knowledge. Graveyard. Mass Grave. No Rest for the Wicked. Icy Weapon. Death Seal. Agony. Purge. Refreshing Spring. Till end of turn, you get a plus one. All right. Ice Wall. Lesser Air Elemental. Plague Zombie. Nilamasu. Plague Skeleton, Neophyte Lick, Lingering Ghost, Rogue Mercenary, Wretched Ghoul, Skeleton Spearman. Okay, so that tells us about the deck, and that's good. Uh, that's all the cards I seem to have. Right. What's this? That's the leaderboard. And the profile. So that's basically it. Okay, so that's been a tour of Might and Magic Battle of the Champions. Um, I'm going to certainly see about more. Because um, it uh, seems interesting. Um, click the play button here. What happens? Yeah, it takes us back to this. Then go back. So I've done that, and now I can do this. The Orc Invasion. And then there's Wolf Soldiers, which... You must complete Orc Invasion and reach level 3 to unlock this mission. Okay. So I can do this right away. I could have done this right away before as well, so I didn't have to do the tutorial. Uh, but, as you saw, doing the tutorial meant I have a current experience in cash. So, you know, resources are nice. Um, let's see here. That's our friends list. Notifications. Congratulations, stable hand. Took the boot. Special reward. Okay. When did I get a special reward? Um. And there's our menu again. Okay. So that's it. Thanks for watching, folks. If you want to see more of this, you know, just uh, say, and I'll be happy to do more of this. I. I used to play Magic the Gathering once upon a time, uh, way back in the day, dark, uh, dark, dark days of pre-internet, and because uh, I had an alpha deck, ugh, I had two alpha decks. I was one of the first buyers. <laughs> um, I also had beta cards and played played for a couple of years actually, and then I ended up giving it all to my friend Jeff. But. Uh, um, yeah, I could give this a go. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day, folks. Goodbye.